Just before we get started with our regular program, I have a few announcements from the Moody Center. Beginning September 12th till October 31st at 6 p.m., there is going to be music performed by local artists along with congregational hymn singing, scripture readings, and fervent prayers made by those attending for our nation's leaders, churches, and pastors at the Moody Auditorium located on 58 Winchester Road, Northfield, Massachusetts. That's Sunday, September 12th through October 31st at 6 p.m. at the Moody Auditorium. Now, Friday, October 1st, the Moody Center is hosting Leading the Way, live with Dr. Michael Youssef. This cost-free, multi-activity event includes a Chick-fil-A dinner and a gospel preaching evening meeting in the Moody Auditorium located at 58 Winchester Road, Northfield, Massachusetts. It all begins at 12 noon and finishes around 8 p.m. Registration is required. Information for this event is on the MoodyCenter.org website. Sunday, October 3rd at 4 p.m., the Moody Center is hosting in the Moody Auditorium a ballet magnificent called Anchored, The Pilgrim Story, celebrating the 400th anniversary of the Pilgrims www.firstloveworks.org has further information. In Northfield, Massachusetts, there is history to be learned simply by taking notice of the names of some of the streets, especially on the north side of town. Names like Holton, Pentecost, Pearson, and Wanamaker. The biggest and most influential name of all these is Moody, named after D.L. Moody of Northfield. Before the days of radio and television, this man preached to over 100 million people worldwide along with starting a church and Bible institute in Chicago that are still running strong today. He started the seminary for young ladies right here in Northfield and the Mount Hermon School for young men in Gill, making it possible for the poor to afford a good education. Tens of thousands from all across America and from around the world over several decades came to Northfield during the summers for preaching and gospel singing conferences. This large grass field was filled with tents accommodating thousands of eager souls coming for these meetings. In this TV series titled D.L. Moody and Northfield, we are going to look at visible evidence we have today which reflect on this great era of Christian activity, both here in Northfield and the immediate area. I hope this series will be both educational and inspirational for you. The Mount Hermon School, started by D.L. Moody in the year 1881, located still today in Gill, Massachusetts, was a place of serious studies for many a young man. The students were from all over the United States, but some came from overseas as well. One particular student by the name of John C. Whiteman of Ireland, after one of Moody's evangelistic campaigns over there, followed Mr. Moody to the States and took up studies at Mount Hermon, for training in the gospel. Now, this young man, along with his friend William S. Anderson, organized evangelistic meetings, and they started on August 11th of 1895. They were held in a little two-room schoolhouse in Moore's Corner in Leverett, Massachusetts. The services went so well 
that they kept the meetings right on going into the autumn. And the result of those meetings was that a church was organized. The following year, on July 8th of 1896, the Moore's Corner Church was officially started. And the young Irishman, John Whiteman, was called to be the first pastor of the church. Very soon after the church was organized, the congregation had a strong desire to have a building built for themselves. So the following year, on May 7th of 1897, a committee was formed to look into all the potentials for building. The estimated cost to build came to about $2,500. Boy, those were different days, weren't they? God wonderfully provided land through a man named Mr. John Watson, who donated the property for the church to build on. The charter membership of the church consisted of about 25 devoted souls, and they celebrated the anniversary of all these efforts right on the property under a tent since the building was not yet completed. But on September 21st of 1898, the building was completed, and they held a dedication service in that building. So directly from the efforts of D.L. Moody, who not only had the vision to start the Mount Hermon School for Boys, but from his overseas evangelistic campaigns, also had the vision to invite young men from other countries to attend the school, like this young man from Ireland. Now, they must have laid hold of Moody's Mount Hermon ethos, that that school wasn't designed to just educate with knowledge, but it was designed to engage the young men in the work of God. Think of it. This young Irishman was so boldly led by the Holy Spirit that along with the help of a few men, it resulted in a church being established all of those years ago. Now what makes this story even better for me is this. Today, meeting in that same old building is a united, strong, growing church family who have continued to carry that same flaming torch of the gospel as a light for this present generation. Mike Grant has been the pastor of the Moore's Corner Church these last seven years since 2014. Moore's Corner Church was founded on the preaching of Jesus Christ and the gospel according to the scriptures. The same gospel that was preached here when the church was started under Pastor Whiteman over 125 years ago is the same gospel we preach today. It is the only gospel that is the power of God unto salvation, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that by receiving him in this gospel by faith alone, that soul is forgiven of their sins and promised by God eternal life. I was digging around in the church attic around three years ago and I came across this Bible. And I looked inside and noticed that it was signed by D.L. Moody. And this is what he wrote. To my uncle Cyrus Holton, D.L. Moody, Northfield, Mass., September 22nd, 1885. So the Morris Corner Church that was born back in 1896, led by a protege of D.L. Moody, is carrying on the same work today. Faces of its members have changed over the decades as hundreds have passed on to their heavenly home but by the power of the gospel and the presence of Jesus Christ in our midst, the church has continued all these years. And by the grace of God, it is still very much alive today with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, leading the way. Next week will be our final episode in this series on Moody and Northfield as we look one more time into his influence for God, not only in Northfield, but in the surrounding region.